It's the Jiu-Jitsu Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Jake Anarino. I'm with the coach, Robin Giesler. He is a fourth-degree black belt under Helson Gracie. He lives the jiu-jitsu lifestyle, and tonight is a very special episode. I'm so excited. We have the grandmaster himself, Helson Gracie, right here with us tonight. How, how cool is that, coach? Good, good night, guys. I hope you be a, a happy, make you guys happy in this talk. And yes, let's talk about jiu-jitsu. Yes, so I'm I'm very excited. I'm 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 stoked, man. It's uh, yeah, it, it's been a long time of coming. You know, we had uh, we had Helson on the episode uh, a while ago, but we had to remove that episode um, for a number of reasons. Uh, none that we'll discuss tonight, but um, <laughs> right, <laughs> we are back and uh, just super excited to have him in. We had an amazing seminar. We had a lot of white belts who had never met Helson before. We had oh some- wow. Yeah, so it was uh, it was a really really fantastic seminar. They got to see really the the quintessential grandmaster in his element, teaching the basics of jujitsu. His you know uh, very simple, basic but effective street self defense um, you know uh, positions, and it, it was it was fantastic. It was great, and man, he was on point tonight. It was uh, it was it was really good. Now, Helson, you're you're a red belt which is very rare uh, in jiu-jitsu. Uh, there's only a handful of guys that have them. That, that's amazing. What is your exact rank? Yeah, I'm a, a 90 degree. I cannot reach the 10 degree because that's the master grace position. And uh, it's hard to be like him. Mark, you can, I can reach the 90 degree red bell. It's like a 16 years complete and devoted to this beautiful art. And God bless you with... Uh, a lot of respect, uh, loyalty, uh, devote and train and serious train. And you got piggyback with this bell and eventually that's my wish. Uh, get the point I can get a, a higher level with jujitsu in honor to process my daddy, what I passed for and outstand. Have this bell today and with the record and the time and hold this time I pass in jujitsu. Oh, bless. Life is beautiful. Well, you've definitely, uh, your, your family has uh, devoted their entire lives to jujitsu. Uh, your father, Elio, you, uh, I mean, you, you, you've, uh, you've devoted yourself to this, and it's done so many good things for people. I know personally, in my case, it's done a lot of great things for me. And uh, I, I, I really appreciate that, that what you and your father have done um, for me personally, and, and I know you've done a lot of great things for Coach Giesler as well, and uh, we're so excited to have you on the show. There was something um, that you told me last time we talked on the episode that we took down that I, I just wanted you to, to, to talk about tonight. And you, I asked you, what, kind of, what would be the number one tip you would give to almost anybody training in jiu-jitsu? And you said repetition. Could you talk about repetition and the importance of it for a minute? Yes, like you know, and like anything else you do in your life, better you want to be, more you repeat. And then that's true. It's, uh, that's nothing else you keep persist and trip. Be better, be better, be better. This can happen in any sport. Yeah, I think the successful ones, the ones real, real, it could be, uh, you know, the best ones in the sport. I think it was the most key. repeat. First, when you found a good, uh, 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 good instructor to take the best uh, uh, progress in your moves you're going to learn. So I got a, you know, I got my, I don't got a choice eventually. I don't got a choice more. I born, God bless you. I got the blessing born in Helio Grace's son. So with this, I think as already, as a blast at the be and the position to be Elio Grace's son and have instructor like him and I cannot I cannot miss this learning. I cannot, you know, disrespect any point. I cannot uh, uh, don't be there. I cannot you know, I always gonna be what did he say, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna repeat eventually. Yeah. My daddy did say that. Jiu Jitsu is beautiful and you have a good instructor. And then you listen and you repeat a lot. The repetition make you sharp. The repetition give you the right time to apply. The more you, you play in, in, in conditions like competition level, you eventually change one position, another one, 
that's make ability to go in advance, you know, because you start, more you practice, more you have the habits to pass one hand, another one, hold another one, in faster uh, situation. And then, like you know, a competition, nothing else, you take advantage of each other. Então, who know better techniques, who train and repeat more, eventually going to apply the moves better. I think a repetition AR the science. Hmm. Interesting. He just had that discussion with us tonight at the seminar. Um, very same thing. Um, I, I, I got a lot of it on video, too. So. Um, oh, great. Yeah. So it, it's... Uh, but this is something I've heard him say from the very first seminar I ever attended. Yeah, like, like you have a student. And then the student, you show him have arm lock. Uh, arm lock in the guard. And then you see the arm lock. Oh, I like this arm lock. You say, yeah, brother. Don't you repeat. You repeat this 50 times a day. Jiu-Jitsu players don't like to repeat too much. He repeat two, five, ten times. He think you know enough. And then you put it aside. Next. Então, what you make you real, uh, 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 apply the positions in the time, you're perfect, you hold tight adjustments, you don't miss the submission. That's repetition, adjustments eventually are. Então, I think if you a guy, a blue bell or beginner, and then you get one arm lock, you repeat a thousand times, particular arm lock, he's going to apply like a brown bell. He's a blue bell, but you repeat so much on numbers, que dessa particular position, he gonna apply like a black belt eventually. He doing a thousand times, same arm lock. Every day come repeat 50 times, same arm lock. Tomorrow, 50 more, 50 more. And then the 2,000 arm locks, like six months you repeat. This arm lock, he gonna apply like a black belt. Just like a black belt. What it means is that? What do black belt apply whole move so well? Because you're doing the same thing for 12, 10, 12 years. In my process, you cannot black belt under 12 years or 10 years of the practice. If you live in Honolulu, you're going to have 10 years, you're going to have a black belt. If you live in another state, take at least 12 years. And then don't have another way to get these degrees before. If people could get these degrees before, I don't think it'd be qualified to be a, a, a real black belt. Because they need to have at least 10 years for here. Repeat everything, apply everything, a lot of repetition. Because when you get a black belt, you need to teach, you cannot make mistakes. You need to apply everything well. You need to repeat everything a lot. In repetition, I think, is the science. I agree. Yeah, I'm not, I know I'm guilty of it. And a lot of students are always looking for that cool new move. And meanwhile, yeah, yeah. when they're practicing all these new moves... They're, they're ignoring the fundamentals that uh, they should be going over with uh, re repeatedly yeah. so that they, you know, they don't even have those moves down. And I, I know I do it. I'm guilty of it myself. Well, <laughs> we, we all are. And this is an observation that Helson's made many times. I, I, I was in it. Uh, I was on vacation, actually, in South Carolina. And and Helson um, was just it just happened to work out to where he was. He was in town at the same time. And. Um, and so I, you know, I'm on vacation, but uh, honey, I'm sorry. I got to go see Helson. Helson's in town. I got to go see. So I, I go over and, I, and I, I see Helson and I'm there and I'm watching and I've seen some old friends I haven't seen in a long time. And I'm talking and I come over to the side and, and Helson's, you know, even when he's off to the side, he's, he's talking. He cannot keep himself away from correcting people. So we talk a, a minute or two. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Hold on. Hold on. Fix that. You know, move your arm here. And so he has a. Um, which is one of the things I love about him because, it, you know, he's always correcting people and helping, making sure, like, he always makes sure that, that everybody in the room understands what it is that he's, he's, he's teaching before he moves on. And, uh, and that's, that's important because a lot of people don't take that time. But, you know, he got frustrated because, you know, a lot, some of the guys were just sitting there talking and he sits down. He's like, see, look, nobody repeats. Yeah, Nobody wants to repeat. I'm like, yeah, I know. I Sometimes I don't want to either. I want to sit down That's and talk right. to you. <laughs> but, That's yeah, right. it's, That's it's, right. it's it's true. And, and, Hard and, to understand. Yeah. The repetition hey. make you better. People think you're doing two, three times, you're going to apply like one guy could do it, like a black belt. What black belt mean? 10, 12 years doing the same thing. And don't this guy have the time, have the weight to put it, some moves to make me apply the moves better, you know? Some hips move a little bit this way. 
your legs can loosen up. And yeah, that's uh, repetition eventually make the sharpness effectively come for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, and, and I remember I've been to a couple of your seminars, Helson, and uh, I, I, what I like about your seminars is uh, I'm, I'm only a white belt. I'm a three-stripe white belt, and uh, I, I, I'm a li- always a little intimidated uh, in, in seminars with these guys, but you um, go over uh, fundamental things that aren't over my head. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I, I love that about your seminars. They, they were a lot of fun, and I learned so much. It was, it was really cool. I think I've been to like three of them by now. In yeah, Columbus. basically, like you can see, my seminars, my positions, my moves, uh, what I am, I don't care, in the bottom, in the top, I'm always conserve about defense myself. So any position, you cross me, I defense myself. So I'm going to pass some guard. I want to block your attack first, and then I think about pass your, your guard. I try pass your guard. More like I say, I'm always going to conserve about the attacks. I'm always going to come in, in the defense position. There's a matter I'm going to pass somebody's guard. But well, first I hold his arm. I short it. I don't, don't want to use your hands to attack me much. I take his weight to block, you know, legs. Don't let him put the foot in the hips. Adjust him and then start doing my pass. So like you can see, I always come with the basically, basically defense, the, ba- the foundations, the defense, the guard, the, the base, you know, things to hold doing. Hold, block one arm, you know, put second hand in the collar, and then you start the pass. Like I'd say, I always conserve about defense. In my jiu-jitsu, I think it's successful for my career, my, my 22 years undefeated, because I defense myself very well. You win the open, you go in divisions, the open division, you play in open division, you, that's proof you need to have a good defense, because you've been in the battle, big, heavy guys, a tough like semi bell, semi level bell, and then you need to cover yourself. You need to real protect yourself down there to not get trapped on arm, you get caught. Então, this I'm doing very well, and I'm very right. I think my daddy teach me this. It's very important. You teach first the basement, the foundation. You know the, the ways to pass your guard out to get caught. You defend yourself when you pass through. That's right. You know, I, uh, I've i never had to use my jiu-jitsu to defend myself in the street. Hopefully, I never will. But uh, I know uh, Coach Geisler certainly has used his uh, uh, jiu-jitsu before. He's told me stories. And um, I'm sh- I-, I see the videos where your father made you uh, uh, fight other um, students uh, from different schools way back in the day. And how, how yes. many times have you uh, had to use your um your jujitsu to defend yourself in the street could you give us an example tell us the story of when it's when it's uh helped you yes i have like man i tell you i have a lot of cases in brazil and a lot of a lot of fights and in brazil people very sometimes disrespectful and 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 intimidate you and try to take money rob and a lot of ways to get in trouble over there and wild country and cops never Come, it's hard to deal with this because cops never show up when you call. And sometimes you need to do your own defense yourself. And God bless you because, my, like you know, Elio Grace grow, uh, create this jiu-jitsu for be used in the streets. The idea Elio Grace get into to that because he's so small, so weak, and then he have his, his rights. And then he want to be defense yourself. You want to protect yourself. You don't want to get intimidated for nobody else. And then he think jiu-jitsu, it's most, the, 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 the part, the most be usable, the most effect, our self-defense. Because that's the section you go into the streets. As you take downs, you wrestle, that's no good for us in the asphalt. So you go in the streets, you don't want to wrestle, sweep, get under a mountain, pass guards. I know doing this, guys. You block him there, you try, use the strikes and, Try make it uh, a more uh, eventually effect with the strikes you can be used in the streets, all the rules, you know, because one thing you're doing this in the mats, like you, you rules in the arenas, the another thing you do in the streets and the self and the self defense survive, and then that's my jujitsu always uh, 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 get to this point. Everything I teach, like today, I teach the groundwork, the mountainscape. 
in the same mount escape. So I have the mount escape out the punch. Well, so the guys doing punch, I have a little change to protect myself. My defense is pretty much the same. The technical way, the way get away, and the street fights or in jiu-jitsu match is exactly the same. And then I see this black belts today going UFCs and shows no holds bar. And don't have any ways to get away from the simple mounting positions. I see the black belts got mounted. The guys try punch the bar, top from the bottle. If the guy try punch the bottle to the top, when the guy have it the top position, oh, and this wow. guy, black belts, and he got to, you know, totally out to the, 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 the situation. And uh, that's, that's real... Uh, piss me off. Black Bell is going to represent jiu-jitsu. You don't have any idea to get away the multi-position holds bar. That's terrible. More. That's I always think when you come with, and learn jiu-jitsu, so you learn with somebody else, you come with the foundation, the teach you first, the basement, the ways to pass the guard and not get choked, the ways to defense your back, the ways to defense the mount, get a mount escapes. Start with these positions. For you first have a good defense. For you can protect yourself without any attack or submission. In the time you defend yourself, the opportunity to win eventually is going to show up. Eventually are. Because if the guy cannot tap you, you start get a chance to tap him out. And then I believe that. I believe in defense. I believe that that's Jiu-Jitsu Kelly Grace create. That's for self-defense. All my passing streets fights, I never provoke. I never did the first punch. In my fights, don't pass most a minute. I have like 142 fights that don't pass a minute. Because I, I eventually, I, I walk it back. I don't provoke nobody. I use my jiu-jitsu only for self-defense. You see, the guy try to hit me. Then I do the, 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 the punch defense. Or I can do the, the kick defense. She try walk in my range. I have the, the range shot her with the kick in the knee clinch like Royce did in UFC before. Então, I have ways to keep myself safe in the streets. You want to have a chance. I walk in, kick his knee clinch like Royce is doing in the past. You can see what Royce is doing. It's pretty effect. You walk back, the guy try hit him, and then he kick the knee clinch, take it down. And then these fights don't take so long because after you clinch, you take it down when you hit somebody in the ground. The guy don't want to fight anymore. It's very inconvenient when the guys take it down and fall. You got elbows in the ground, or head butts in the ground. You fall with the head in the concrete. It's hard to continue the fight, you know? I have experience with these takedowns in the, in the street fights. You don't have mats. Reality is, is coming real. And any fall in the concrete, you don't want to continue the fight. And then... So you think it changes a lot, um... The, the the modern rules of mixed martial arts, right? I, the, it's not the, real. It's, it's it's very difficult in some ways. So I, I this brings me to a, a question we had from uh, one of our listeners, Gary Hashman. Um, uh, he said, I would like to know his thoughts on the guard work in MMA, mostly about how, because of the point system, the guard isn't used as an opportunity to attack, and fighters either try to tie up to get the fight stood back up or look to elevate with butterfly sweeps or stand up um, other than a few um, specific fighters there are not really any fighters using the guard as a place to attack what, what do you do you think that's a condition of, of the rule system as no, than- no 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 because you have ways to control the opponent in the guard bottle or in the guard top you can block that's eventually my class tonight so here. you so you think it's 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 less about the rules you think it has more to do with the lack of knowledge of the fighters yes because the rules the rules run the show yeah so I cannot head butt so I cannot kick from the bottom so I cannot nail him for the body with my knees so I cannot use this is not you cannot tell if that's gonna be the the real Things gonna happen in the streets, you know. So, so in that regard, you you do agree. You you think that because it, it well, like I you said, can't, to, you can't do certain things. Like I say, like, like I say, kick the guy in the face from the. Let's guard. have this class tonight here, right, Robbie. Right. That's what exactly what I teach your school tonight. The way they approach somebody in the guard, I fall in somebody's guard. Eventually, I'm gonna block his arms. I'm gonna block his arms immediately. My two arms gonna block his arms, and then eventually, I'm over his his arms. 
I was using different techniques in the streets. My personal, you know, uh, 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 defense or, or my behave in the streets, I use a lot of strike. Right. I'm not, don't don't think I'm a nice guy, I'm going to submit you. No. <laughs> I, I got a chance, I take you down. Eventually, be, any kind of the street fight. Or, I know you're not a or, nice or aggressive <laughs> position, any punch, I'm going to reject. Say, I don't want to fight. He's, me, the guy can come aggressive to me. I'm going to apologize to him. I walk back, sir, I don't want to fight. Please don't punch me. Do this, do that. He come try punch me. Then I'm going to use my jiu-jitsu. And then... A, a hundred, a hundred forty-two fights exactly like that. People talk to my girlfriend. I tell you respect, you know, respect the punch by blocking him, take it down, and eventually he got surprised with a system in self-defense that's so, so big. I can defense chokes from the back, headlocks, hold over the arms, holds for the backs, headlocks, squeeze, uh, guillotines, defense. You know, I can defense self-defense. Any of the first contact in the fight. The guy try push me, the guy try hold me, the guy try take me down, shoot my legs. I have defense, self-defense, everything. You know, the self-defense make me put it outstanding with my defense. I don't need to hit nobody. So I try to hit, I open my defense. You know, I keep my defense closed. When they punch, then I wrap the arms, or I kick his knee, clinch. But I always think about defense first, and eventually hold this fight, the troublemakers, and... It's supposed to be pretty much uh, control, you know? Like, you know, uh, the Grace crew, Helson Grace team, I have a shirt to say, Grace is jiu-jitsu against violence. Or jiu-jitsu against violence, you know? But that's exactly what I was doing. So I never take charge. I have this 142 fights in the streets because it got provoked, it got pushed to fight out the my, the my, the my wish. Any fight is fun. Guys, any fight to be fun, any fight to go in the adrenaline you pass for, don't cuss, the man. The, the risk is the, 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 the choice of the fight, you understand? Então, se I can avoid any fight, I'm going to avoid. I, I, I hope you don't have any, you know, the guy, you understand, he's supposed to be understandable and be nice to each other. Yeah? But sometimes you don't have this choice. If people come aggressive, yeah, I think a system, my system, I teach my associations like today. I come with jiu-jitsu groundwork. But I always put some strikes, some punch, defense, stand-ups, and kick sides, you know. This is self-defense streets. And that's my jiu-jitsu about. That's Helio Gracie. It's so, it's so, Helio uh, Gracie to say, if you know, if you know train, if you don't know self-defense, you don't know the Helio Gracie jiu-jitsu. And then he's a hundred percent Right. So, um, what about, um, I, I guess, uh, uh, the, the one, one thing that, that does make a big difference between the self-defense situation and the UFC or M- modern MMA, modern mixed martial arts. Or it can be a street it, fight, value yes. tool in the street, so value tool. The, the biggest difference I guess, in my opinion, is the fact that, that at least in the street, you have somewhat of an element of, of surprise, right? The, that's first, big. First, you don't have met. It, true, yeah. I want, you guys, I want you guys to talk about different way. Yeah, yeah. I want two wrestler guys. Wrestler a little bit in the asphalt. Yeah. I'm going to pass <laughs> guard the chair, the sweep, you had butterflies in the concrete. Try <laughs> sweep somebody in the asphalt. Try uh, army lock, spill around, uh, uh, butterflies. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, there's this this fence hold sleeves. No I have sleeves to hold. It's hard to keep this hooks lift up, sweep. Uh, it's gonna scratch your back. It's gonna scratch all your butt. It's gonna scratch your legs. It's no place to 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 scratch your back in the in the concrete. Me asphalt. Então, the the result of jiu-jitsu to be applied is totally different. The the jiu-jitsu you're gonna apply in the streets. It's not jiu-jitsu you do in the mats, you wrestle, not. I don't want to get in the position to go in somebody's guard. You need to pass, like the guy make a question. What the way you behave, you follow somebody's guard. I don't want to pass. I don't want to submit. I don't want to be there longer. I don't want to take punch. What am I going to do? I'm going to be close, cover, lay over him, block his arms, he punch, headbutt him, this 
And the time I block his arms, I'm put open to do anything I want. And the system is more to defense yourself. I always come in my defense, and then I turn offense. I think defense win the fight. So you have a good defense. You can block the punch. You can think about, you know, submitting him. But if you don't know block the, pan, the punch, the fight not going to take so long, you know. And today, uh, it depends. You go in UFC, you go in arenas. It's totally different to go in the streets. Don't compare the streets with nothing else. Don't compare the streets with any kind of training or, or what are you doing from, from uh, uh, going to Abu Dhabi. It's going to help in a whole bar. I know, think so. Because uh, the street fight, sometimes the guys don't know nothing. You have the explosion, you have the, the good hitman, you have the good uh, 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 vision. You, call, you put his punch in the right spots. He can knock it down out. Any jiu-jitsu apply. You see a lot of these fights, first punch, the guy knocked down. Então, I don't know. Sometimes you see these fights in the UFC, in this uh, octoguns. And guys, 25 minutes, nobody punches nobody. That's not what happened really in the streets. Right. You guys don't see fights past 10 seconds in the streets. A 10 seconds fight in the streets is a long fight. One, two, three, 10 seconds, the guys kill each other. Yeah. The adrenaline, the, the, the so much, you get tired. In two seconds, you start <laughs> on adrenaline, you miss the breed. That's terrible. <laughs> então, yeah. I think you need to first block yourself. First, avoid fights. I recommend everybody avoid fights and behave and get jiu-jitsu for self-defense. That's my point. And that's abusable. And that's, I think, my result. 102 fights, que não pass a minute. I never take a punch. I got a three, three, three guys. I put three guys to sleep in 27 seconds in the streets. Three guys pass out. Hoyle come close to help me when the three guys already pass out. And oh. I believe it, this is the result of the coordination, train, you know, view and, and eventually experience in the streets. Because a lot of people, people in the streets are going to wrestle, going to play sweep, going to butterfly. I don't think this thing is going to get a time. Yeah, I don't think the sweep is about a fly. This pass, fly pass, don't work in street fights. Well, each one have different mentality. <laughs> I, I come from the hardcore. I use jiu-jitsu for the streets. I don't use jiu-jitsu for Abu Dhabi. I don't use jiu-jitsu. I did jiu-jitsu for competition because that's the sport I like. My only reason to make my, my cardiovascular, and then I, I go in competition to get strong, to work out, more, I know what is going to be the streets is the self-defense. Então, I have this jiu-jitsu. More. When you tell me going the streets, you go in the ground, I try to avoid hold this pass, side cross, knees in the belly, mouth, as soon as possible. Take it down, block, hit him hard, you run. And then I have success with that, with my strategy, my blocks, my defense. I think it's the best system in the world. It's still today. People tell questions about me. Mr. Gracie, why the Gracies don't get in the top anymore? Why the Gracies not the best in the world anymore? Because any Gracie follow my dad anymore. You don't have one Gracie to go like you make a Gracie strategy. Or my strategy. I know I don't train MMA people. I don't train nobody to go in a host bar. I know I don't push this. I think this is very personal. The guy want to go every May, go over there and put your cell phone. It's not the instructor. He called the students. He pushed the students to go. I don't want to be responsible for any damage from nobody else. Name my son. Holland, go over there and compete no the MMA. Daddy, I go over there. I got a punch. I broke my teeth. What's going to be now? Say, son, it's your fault. Então, I don't want to be my fault and push my son to go. He, I cannot tell you nothing going to happen to him. If he got a punch, broke his nose, eventually I'm going to feel guilty. So I don't push nobody to go. The ones who are going, going for yourself and uh, get a consequence yourself too. But I recommend going places like that. You know mount escape as well. You know block yourself in the punch in the guard well. Be in the top of the way to avoid punch come for the battle too well. And a lot of knowledge and Eventually, be prepared. I need a lot of things come with this, this, this new uh, sport. 
MMA sport. You need to be prepared, you need to follow the rules, I need to stand up, I need this, I need that, you know. Make it a little bit complicated. You go in the streets, the thing is more simple, the thing is most effect, you eventually hurt more. And then I keep the streets, I like streets, I like it. Uh, train, be prepared for anything happening in the streets because I know going arenas, I know making money. That's not my way to make money. That's not no holds bar. I hate this money. I don't want to be paid, okay, to go in the holds bar and think you're going to fight somebody else for a month. I'm going to fight this guy. I'm going to fight. This eat me inside. I don't like being this adrenaline, this physically, mentally prepared for a month, diets and I doing diets myself every day, man. So I go on diets for, for, for fight. I'm going to think I'm going to fight somebody else. That's going to be my mission. That's going to be my think. This eat me inside. So I think I'm going to fight somebody next month. Yeah, I need to kill this guy. I need to go over there. It's going to be my reputation game. This think one month making me bad inside. I don't want to put myself in that. I don't want to make money in MMA. I don't need to prove nothing myself. I have my record done. I don't want to fight. I hate schedule fights. I hate um, get up situations in the streets. Can I need to fight in the right way? Sometimes you need to fight the right way. So a guy push you or talk to your girlfriend or, 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 or disrespect your daughter. You, you want adrenaline come, you're going to fight. That's my jiu-jitsu fort, defense of myself, you protect my family. I never gonna use jiu-jitsu like a profit to make money. That's I never get challenged, I never fight. People challenge me to fight, they say, I don't wanna fight for money. Most you wanna do something with me, knock my door, I fight for free. I like fight for free. I like defense my house, I like defense my, my owner. That's I fight for. That's I have 142 fights undefeated. I never get a punch. It's the only fight that I have to, to defense the family, to honor the family. My daddy told me to represent when the seven guys from karate, like in 1971, 1972, uh, he, he had a fight in, in the, in the uh, Olympico, and then seven karate guys, Charlie, seven Grace members, and then Horace, Hall's fight, Horion fight me, and Cassinho Guimarães, o, o, o Serginho, o Inácio e o, e o Fábio. E, do, e o Carson Jr., seven guys fight. My fight, eventually the first one, uh, in the night too, I have my record, 56 seconds. I have my fight, the first fight the night. Who, who was the young kid? Can I fight? I don't remember the name. The guys come yeah. from karate. Put you no know, beginners uh, uh, in, the, in the grappling, more like black belts in karate. Kids okay. can I never hear, I never know. Different sport, I don't know the guys. Right. No, uh, um, who was the 15 year old that represented the Gracie family? Carson, Carson Guimarães. He fight eventually with 13. Oh, wow. 13 years old in this fight. 13. Carson, 13. <laughs> you have a little guy lighter, he pick the guy, and then he fight to 13. Pretty fast fight, too. Yeah, he mount yeah. and beat up the guy. Took his back, choked Yeah, a little yeah. kid already on. In Brazil, is allowed. 13 years old, got in the fights. That was and great. And then the fights. boy already, he's a champion. And then another guy fight, I think, 16 more. He did a good job. So how many of those matches actually, did any of those happen in, in, in seminars? where you? Because I know there, that those happen from time to time, early on in the 90s and 80s. No, we have Was a whole kind. Eventually, to, to stabilize jiu-jitsu, I just did a lot of events like yeah, that. Yeah. And then, like you know, the after, after I leave Brazil in 85, you still have 86, 87, the fights with uh, 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 Hanzo, with... Uh, 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 Eugenio, mm -hmm. and then the Maracanã have a big right. Yeah, yeah. And then have another one after with uh, George, uh, uh, George, uh, George Gogel and fight uh, uh, Fabio, 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 Fabio Gogel Fabio. fight uh, uh, Hugo, the guys, Kerr, remember? Mark Kerr. Yeah, the guys yeah. fight there. No, my, my, oh, no, no, yeah, yeah earlier on. The yeah, Brazilian yeah, yeah, fights rest, Luta Libre, Luta Libre, Luta Libre yeah. against yeah. Fabio Gogel, I think fight... Uh, uh, Burilo Bustamante. Yeah, yeah. Some Absolutely, guys fight yeah. in the night. Yeah. And then the Jiu Jitsu win again. And then, more like I'd say, this, 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 this uh, fights, nights, still start come more. When the wrestling guys start fighting Jiu Jitsu, and then this thing, this uh, environment, start back in Brazil again. 
And then you start coming all these new shows. Sure. That's everywhere, making now 10 shows in Brazil, different shows people make it that don't hold bar. You have UFCs, have all these shows to pass, probably Bellator, all these shows to be, you know. And man, I think it is, that's a good sport. Yeah, it's good to watch. More, but it's not the same. Stanger, you know. Yeah. You put, I don't want to push the students like I say to go. I don't want to be responsible for the damage. When the students cannot real fight the real stuff. I like value to do. When, when you correct me if I'm wrong, but when and, and feel free to chime in here, Jason or Jake, if you'd like. But when when you were fighting, you know, early on, you guys were still fighting for the superiority of jiu-jitsu, right? The honor of jiu-jitsu. Like I'd say, I never fight. But do you feel it's, that's necessary anymore? No, you'd be proof. Yeah. Everybody know, everybody doing jiu-jitsu today. Who don't know doing triangles, army locks, don't fight. Who don't know defense triangle, army locks, not going arenas anymore. Today, everybody know army locks, everybody doing chokes, everybody chokes from behind, everybody hook, everybody learn jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu no more private for the graces only more. Everybody doing, everybody apply, everybody going. I think the graces, for some reason, keep getting into to this Brazilian jiu-jitsu, the new generation. Mm-hmm. You hold this grace is going Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Hold this grace butterfly, spider guard. Hold this grace is uh, use different hooks. It's not like me. I disapprove a lot of this causes you to fight and shoot on their legs. I have a defense this for self-defense. You cannot shoot people's leg. I see a lot of cousins, students, he got knocked down in the first five, ten seconds and shoot people's leg. What a black belt jiu-jitsu going to shoot people's leg. Right. Right? First move, bang, knock down. Because you put yourself in the wrong spot. My students never going to do that. My black belts never going to shoot in street fight. Because the guys know defense. Both right. hands of the show, they nail his face. I don't want to do a move you have defense for. But a lot of people don't know about self-defense. You put yourself down there. A lot of black belts, a lot of members of the family... This guy knocked down and shoot people's leg. Yeah. Grace, you're not supposed to shoot people's leg. And you Grace you teach, don't shoot people's leg because they're going to put both hands on your shoulder, step back, and nail your face. When people don't listen, my daddy, you cannot be over top. What are you going to be in the top of the line if you don't listen to the grandmaster? You're doing everything upside down. Então, a lot of people in jiu-jitsu don't listen Mr. Grace anymore. Yeah. You hold these guys, don't be semi perform so I'm sorry. You want to be successful, come with me, I give you the, the way to be champion. Jake, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I, I, I was going to chime in with another question unless you had something. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm just soaking, it soaking in. all this in. Yeah, yeah it's good. wonderful. Yeah. So my... Uh, Promotable. Yeah, yeah. My... my I guess uh, there's a few questions that I have for Helson. One being, um, you know, what is uh, what is it that, that that is your your mission? Do you feel like now? Like, what is your your? Because uh, you've been spending a lot of time in Brazil lately. You're 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 almost sharing time between Brazil and the U.S. Now it seems like 100%. you're building a lot going. You yes. know, you have a lot going on down there. Yes. So, what is it you feel? If because you have this feeling that that you're, you're championing championing your 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 father's vision, so to speak, what is it you feel is is your your contribution to the jujitsu lifestyle? I keep falling, you Grace, man. Not that you change. I'm very upset with people who change the bells, people who change the rules, people who change the 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 the. the, the, the my daddy make a form to be promote. The right, so, so let's talk about that. There, there was some. My daddy make a issue. form to promote the kids the bells, right? Yeah. And then my daddy have the best results. What did my daddy decide? He's come for deep in his heart to make better jiu-jitsu for us compete. Então, se make three bells for kids, é three bells for kids. Se make three bells for adults, é three bells for adults. So, so let's let's talk about that for a second because I I know that 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 you had. Um... Uh, this was one of the things that we talked about the last time we had you on the podcast, which got a little heated. You were a little upset, and we understand why. It was, you know, you 
um, you're trying to carry the, the the flag that your father, you know, your father made. And and uh, so one of the things was um, what the IBJJF has done uh, with the belt system, correct? There's some of the things that you, you disagree with, like the white and red belt, and I believe there was yes. the grading for... The uh, I think there was even some some issue recently on on dink, Twitter with dink. some guys who who were who were you know you, you were you were you were looking to test um, a student uh, you were t- looking to test Phil McLaurice here soon for his sixth degree and some people didn't didn't like it he be, um, he he already going like the statistic my dad what did my dad have in his form you got a two years you got you got a black belt she already teach. Purple Bell, you teach. A lot of my students start teach Purple Bell. You start teach Purple Bell. Brown Bell, two years you teach. And then you go in Black Bell. Então, se you teach for four years, Purple Bell, in my supervision, Brown Bell, I keep coming here four times a year. You take three years in the process to change a bell. Three years, three years and a half, three years. And then I come here four times a year. I keep adjusting you. I keep showing self-defense. You're going to be already for the system. You're going to be already to be a test. And then eventually you're going to be approved in the self-defense. You're going to get a black belt with, with white stripes because you already make the curse to be instructor. When you teach purple bell, I watch you. You teach purple bell, I watch you. First degree, second degree, fourth degree, third degree, fourth degree. I watch you. And then I promote your black belt. You wanna, because I see you, you teach all these years right. before, you already have experience in deal with students. You have experience to show the positions. You already make your instructor course in the terms the purple bell with brown bell. And then I come see your, your self-defense complete. I'm going to need to be perfect. I need to see perfect self-defense. I'm going to adjust the point to be already. And when you be already, I'm going to meet the test. It should be approved. I give a diploma. You're going to get a diploma, the black bell with the red stripes, with two with the red stripe with the two tips white in the edge. That's to show your instructor. See you a brown bell, you never teach. And then when you get black bell, you wanna get instructor now, you're gonna spend two years black bell with white stripe. With white bar. With yes. white bar, yes. And then you're gonna make the the curse two years, and then you got a red bell with red bell with white stripe to the side. Se a black belt only compete, compete, never teach, you're gonna get a black belt with the red bar. You don't make course to instructor, you only read black belt with the red bar. You can be a, a, a advanced student. Right. And so 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 the stripes were only meant for instructors. Only, only for... for instructors. So you be a black belt, you have the white stripes, and then you start coming the chips. These chips, my daddy say, after you get the black belt white stripe. So you can make stadio. You got a black belt with the red bar. You spend two years, and then you got a red bar, b- black belt with the red bar. With these two years, you got the two stripes first outside. Right. You start getting instructor course. Right. You got instructor now. And in another two years, it'll take 40 years to get the first stripe. Right. So you already have the two stripes in the white in the black belt. The, the two white stripes to send you instructor. Two, two years, you got a degree. Right. If you got this degree, in two, two years, I come, supervise the test. Personal, I want to be anyone to get promoted to my association, only get promoted from myself. You know, Elio Gracie teaches that, to, to, to teach in two, two years. He coming out of the Brazilian Federation, he changed everything upside down. A short years, and now it's three, three years, you got a stripe, you only got a third stripe to this, Search stripe to that. I'm too old to listen. Red bells tell me, red black bells tell me what to do. These guys to change. That's Jiu Jitsu never going to be in, in Olympic Games because having too many chiefs. If everybody want to change the grand chief, Gracie Brazilian uh, uh, Federation doing one, BBH Jiu Jitsu doing one. Uh, the, another one do you want in Brazil another rules here another rules Jorge another rules Hicks another rules Gracie Barra another rules so each one so it's never gonna be in Olympic Games right. never because no have agreement 
The only way you're going to have agreement from me is see everybody follow the grand mastery. I don't want to see innovation. I don't want to follow this guy's bells. Now have bells with stripes inside, have pink bells, have red, white bells, have bells with stripes in. I'm against this. I'm going to start making a revolution about I don't want to change nothing in my association. Everything keep Helio Grace way. And then that's bless my successful. Então, some people complain. Some people don't follow Helio Grace rules. Então, you cannot talk about me. You cannot talk about change Helio Grace rules. Everybody's wrong. Okay? I only think Helio Grace is right. Everybody can want to change things about Helio Grace is wrong. Então, who approve me? Yes who go around and other people going, who believe in Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation rules is right, I think is wrong, totally wrong. Helio Grace rules make a tournament. I compete 22 years in Helio Grace rules. I never broke a bone. I never turned my ligaments in competition. I never have my knees stand. I never have my wrist hurt. I never came doing class because somebody squeezed my wrist and now I hurt. These tournaments allow knee bars, heel hooks, The competition don't care about the competitors. Então, make a lot of knee bars. A lot of these competitors, black belt, got knee bars, no compete again. So, World champions got knee squeeze, never right. turn back in competition again. So, ex explain your, your, your thought on, on, on the knee bars and the, and the leg. Uh, it damage. The, the leg damage the student for the rest of their life. If going to this tournament, he push knee bar, he hooks. So, I'll take my son over there. He got a knee bar. You're going to quick teach, help my school. And then I'm going to give him, like, example. You see what happened to Hala? Going tournaments around the so, bar. So basically, Now he cannot compete anymore. Yes, because so, it's going to take him forever. He so, just got a Hala. My son just got army stand and resist army lock. Yeah. Don't these things hurt? Yeah. He mistake, his mistake, he resist army lock. Right. He make a mistake. I don't talk about this mistake. I talk about people putting rules to allow squeezing knee bars You hurt each other. Because you, you feel like that's in, inherently more dangerous than an knee bar. So get knee bar. So press yeah. fast. Yeah. You don't have time to tap. When you tap, you already, you already scream. Yeah. And then that's, that's a mean position to be allowing tournaments. This proves that the tournaments don't care about the competitors. And then I'm against these tournaments. I don't think nobody's going to knee bar me in the streets. Anyone want to try knee bar, I can kick your face. <laughs> Not going to work. You can try with me. <laughs> Instructors in the bar, you want to, ones you like in the bar, apply me in the streets. Come in my house and knock on my door. You want to see you guys apply what? <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> I'm open for that. It's an invitation. Everybody can come in the bar me. Or I can kick your face too, okay? I can punch your face, headbutt you, kick your head back. Right. <laughs> That's a funny. Nobody in the <laughs> bar me. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. Let me I never got you, a new bar. You're you not going to have it now. Uh, Coach, this is also a question for you and, and Helson. Like, first of all, uh, have you guys ever had a student make you tap? And if so, it, it, I'm sure in a way it's got to be mixed feelings. Like, you're proud, but uh, isn't it also a little <laughs> – Don't you get a little angry, a little pissed off that you got tapped by your student? Or would no. you like be more no. proud? So, so this is definitely two different people. Yeah. On the, because I can tell you for sure that my answer is going to be very different from Helson's. So let I'll, let, I'll, I'll, I'll let Helson answer, <laughs> and it's probably going to be a very simple no. <laughs> well, first, I think, I think in no way I can make a student better than me at any point. Nobody can be better than me. I'm sorry. First, because I'm most sick. I'm the most hungry man. I don't want to lose competition. I come from my daddy. This makes me real proud and real honor. And then uh, I don't think so. I don't think, no way. Students get close, get a close, and more never give me a hard time. It real pressure. It make me, you know, worry about him. Uh, all my students, the ones that come, the process is different. When the white bell, he tap 10 times in 10 minutes. When the blue bell, he tap 6 times in 10 minutes. When the purple bell, he tap 4 times in 10 minutes. When the brown bell, he tap 2 times, 1 time in 10 minutes. The black bell, he come even, start get better. More always, always gonna be smashed, always gonna be 
It's hard to surprise me because when it comes with his corn, I'm already have my, my cake make. I don't think it's get close. <laughs> I never passed for situation. I never got submit. Yeah, I'm too old for that. So I don't think it's going to happen now. I don't think so. You tried your best, Jake. <laughs> oh, I, 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 uh, yeah, that was that, that was uh, uh, we'll, that's a challenge. We'll, we'll have to segue back into that sometime because <laughs> because there, there, I still Helsin, have some things I need to answer. I need to talk I about. Know, the, does Helson even know how we kind of turned the jujitsu world upside down with that video? We have so many uh, people. Angry yes, about I think it. he does. I think he's he's seen it. And, and yeah, you know, talk that, about this today. I you, you know what's funny is because. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding because the, the you know it was such a fun thing and it was you know it was such a lighthearted thing and people don't realize how easygoing Helson really is. Yes, he's the serious guy. I mean, you know, you piss him off. I mean, you know, I, I've seen it before. It's not good. It's not you don't want to be around it. But um, but people don't realize how good natured uh, Helson really is. He's really the the most. Um, I was my first time meeting him. I, I've told you this story before. I've, I think I've mentioned it a few times on the podcast, but I was nervous as hell. You know, I'm like, what? You know, I had met Hoist before, and Hoist, when he walked in the room, uh, this is back when he was still fighting. It was not too long after UFC 5, I think the first time, or, or maybe right after UFC 4, um, when I first went to a Hoist seminar, and he walked in and he, like, you know, had to stare at everybody. It was just like this menacing sort of. He was friendly during the, the 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 seminar, but it was almost like he had to walk in, and uh, you know, and it, he was looking for the guy who was going to challenge him that day, you know. And oh, wow. so it seemed very intimidating. I'm like, oh man, like uh, I just want to say hi to this guy. And so when I met Helson, I'd heard all the stories, and I was super excited because I'm like, man, I get to meet I get to meet Helson Gracie, and I've heard all these stories, and I can't wait. And I walk up, and and you know, he's. Uh, you know, Hoist was a black belt at the time. Uh, you know, like fourth degree, same as same as me. And then, uh, well, same as me now. I was a white belt at the time. But then, I, when I met Helson, um, uh, he was a red and black belt already. And um, you know, I walked up and I was like, "Oh, hey, it's so nice to meet you. Should I should I call you? I didn't know what to call him. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to call him Master or whatever." And he looked at me, goes. No, you call me Helson. You, you you show me respect by sh- that's my name. He shook my hand. And he goes, "You show me respect by showing up to my class," and I right away was like, "Wow, that was incredible!" I just met Helson Gracie, and he just he told me to call him Helson. Like he didn't he didn't demand anybody bow to him or any of this you know any of that stupid stuff. He was just down to earth and very. Uh, you know, fun and energetic. And if you've been into his classes, you know what that's like, and uh, and that's him. That's that's how he is all the time. And it, that's that was such a refreshing thing because, it, like, the toughest guy in the room was the happiest guy in the room. You know, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, I'll, so I don't think people really fully understood that you know you weren't being disrespectful. First of all, for our listeners out there, Jake is an insult comic. Like that—that that is what he does for a living. I get paid to get on stage and and you know uh, play with people and and make fun of them and have fun and it's yeah. all in good fun and I try not to upset anybody usually you know it's all just good fun so. And that's the thing is that, you know Helson was having fun with the whole thing too and and uh, we'll have to cut it we'll we'll have to cut this this interview short we we're gonna have to go soon but um, but yeah I, I I'm glad we we brought that up because I I hope our listeners understand there were a lot of people that really felt like. That was really uh, derogatory or or um, or disrespectful to Helson, and you know I think you've said it multiple times that you you've got we've got the uh, utmost respect for for this man, and 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 part of it is because of you know how he can play like that. He didn't you know I, well you can explain Helson. Well, you remember you you meet my daddy before? Yeah, I got a half of this from my daddy. My daddy's the man, so simple, oh smile. Always calm, always blast, always play, come close, always a watch, always have fun, good commentaries, always help in mats. That's the spirit, that's a young spirit to have grace be in the mats and smile everybody, shake hands, make everybody happy, you know, his jokes, his techniques, and that's wonderful. It's being in this life with, you know, with learn my daddy gave me past 
in the match. It makes the students, you know, be honest, be uh, respectful, be loyal. And this one thing, when you teach loyalty, you have loyalty, you pass this through for you look in the eyes of the guy, the guy see you, loyal for him. That's how my students feel. Helson coming here every day. He never miss us. He always come. I come in late, man. I'm going to show up, you know. But I always be here. I always going to be honest in my business, in my association. And I have this from my daddy, man. I think my daddy teaches that. Oh, smile. Oh, it's fun. Oh, it's play. You know what I mean? That's the simple way, you know. Jiu-jitsu, you don't need to be cocky. You don't need to be push. You don't need to be mean. You don't need to be, you know, attitude. As be what you are and let jiu-jitsu flu, you know. Let you get jiu-jitsu in your blood for sport, like friendship. Pass this another one. And then God bless you with jiu-jitsu, man. Yeah, I think uh, that's a beautiful life my daddy gave us. Today I see so many people follow him. Well, so many people follow one team or no follow the, you know, I think you know, give respect to my daddy, create, you know, give respect to what he really did for Jiu Jitsu. You know? Everybody's supposed to be listening to him, follow the great things he gave to us, the grand opportunity to get the best Jiu Jitsu. He put this in the streets to make people save old people, kids. You know? My Jiu Jitsu today is most for old people, women, and kids. The competition too strong. I don't worry too much anymore. Competition, I'm going well. I just I got my team in Brazil for the second year I compete. I have a first school, I think Grace Bar, 150 competitors, making 60, 30, 30, 60 medals. The second place, 100 competitors have uh, 32 medals. I'm with 30 students. I make 28 medals. I got the plaque at the best school in rendement and the tournament. So I bring 30 students, make 28 medals. That's the second year in Brazil. I walk back to compete the competition in Brazil. I'm already third place national. Have some great team, third place in the nationals. And then that's a great result. That showed how much my jiu-jitsu is being competition too. More. It's natural my jiu-jitsu going to win competition because Helio Gracie Foundation. More, it's not only this. I think everything comes in competition. It's eventually the technique you, you are present, you're going to present there. E the repetition, the loyalty, all these things come together. More, I'm very happy to back into Brazil, start getting more time in Brazil, and start putting competition back in Brazil again, because it's very important you win your own land, you know. I want to win in Brazil now. I'm already in third place, this last national. Yeah, I hope you get better position next year, second or first place. I'm going to only bring 30 students this time, 28 medals. More, this number, this number going to be increased. And I respect better results the next year. More, God bless. Competition, like I'd say, always going well. And then um, my thing, you know, I be self-defense and keep the legacy my daddy. Try to keep the rules he make. Try to get the rules. Então, people complain about my attitude sometimes. But a lot of people don't know the foundation, you know. Why I promote the students like that? Because I'm following the grace way. Why my guys get promoted? Because I'm supervised. Why the black belts can teach my black belts the best instructors in self-defense in the planet? My black belts are the best instructors in the whole USA. Out the Grace family, the best instructors, Helson Grace team. I have 80 black belts, complete pure self-defense. And then a lot of people, a lot of instructors possible. They are not the instructors, no my school. I want to make self-defense program and see if it pass. I don't think so. I don't think nobody qualify. Maybe some schools like Pedro Valente, Rory, a couple ones. Some guys be approved more. Uh, my system is pretty sharp. And my system is pretty request. Really, really coordination with the steps, with hands, and right point, elbows down. Really details that a lot of people don't know exist. And that's successful. Thanks, bless to be here. We thank you guys for the opportunity to talk in the radio today and have my ideas more. I always, you know, I was going to be my daddy's side. And then I'm against this new world, new revolution, new rules, new bells. I like the simple way. And the ones that don't like, man, are going to be against. Doesn't matter. I keep Helio Grace's team. Uh, I'm going to try make back in competitions again. 
make a better competition for my students, my students, not for everybody else, because I want my students to compete in the save and the toughness. Uh, my Helio Grace rules are 10 times toughness than Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu rules, you're doing one move, you make nine points. In my tournament, you're never going to make nine points in one move. You put, hold the knee, put him down, jump over mountain, that's nine points in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. In my tournament, to make nine points, you cannot make like that. Impossible. You need to pass the guard, hold three minutes, hold knee in the belly, hold two minutes, mounting him, hold three minutes. It's hard to deal points in my tournament. And then I keep you at your grace, and good luck for everybody else. <laughs> What I can say, right, Robbie? That's it. This, this wall growing so much. That's my, my, my talk tonight, and then uh, I'm going to be here again. I'll be back in next couple of weeks. I'll be with Robbie again here. Yeah, I like to work with Robbie because you guys make good kind of question to make these people understand why my thinks and why I respect Jiu-Jitsu today. I hope everything well, keep the best and get together, you know, unite this, this Jiu-Jitsu. You try to think with the better, you know, better uh, uh, rules, better attitudes, you know, use Jiu-Jitsu for better better rights, you know, for better things, you know, self-defense, you know, competition with good rules, you know, hurt people, you know. I'm very uh, just in this point. And I hope everybody think about what Elio Gracie did for us. Don't forget. And nothing to the same, man. <laughs> I wait to him. Sorry. I'm against anything else can move my daddy's rights or think my daddy don't know what to do. Who think about that, man? I think it's going to start jiu-jitsu again. But anyway, I'm That's ready to so be on. I'm so happy to go to one of your schools, Helson, is because I know that it's coming directly from the source of, of Elio. And, and uh, I know that it's not, uh, there's, there's no other outside influences. It's wonderful to go to a, a school with the, the, the re coming from the real master uh, Elio. Uh, uh, it's just, it's an honor. And we're so thankful for you to take time out of your busy schedule. We know how busy you are to come and just talk about jujitsu with us for an hour on our podcast. You, it means so much to us. Uh, you, you don't, you have no idea. Uh, and yeah. actually it's 1230 the, in the morning here, folks. We're, we're, we're keeping him up late. So <laughs> I'm oh, ready to go. Way. That's making my life be excited. I always want to help <laughs> the sport to talk. I'm to like talk about jiu-jitsu, about my daddy. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the ideas and keep you on, my family. I'm very happy to have this talk with you guys. Thanks for the opportunity, Rob. Yeah, thank you. You too, guys. Thanks a lot, Boats. And I always be on, man. Keep pushing the show. And very happy to talk about jiu-jitsu, for sure. And you can find Helson on Facebook. He has a Facebook page. He's got a, a new YouTube page where he's putting some videos up that are really cool to watch. Uh, you can find us on Facebook under the Jiu-Jitsu Lifestyle Podcast. Uh, uh, Robin's page is GracieOhio.com. Uh, and uh, you can catch us on Twitter, BJJ at BJJ Lifestyle Pod. You can find me under Jake Anarino with an I. That's I-A-N-N-A-R-I-N-O. Figure that out. It's, it's the alphabet in a word. It's fun. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. And uh, anything else you want to plug, Robin? No, I was just going to say that uh, Helson's been extremely active now uh, on the social media end, uh, which we've been trying to bug him for a long time, but he's getting a lot of content out there, like like the, the, the YouTube channel. He's putting up videos all the time, so go subscribe to his YouTube channel and find out what he's doing. He's traveling all over the world, and he, you can follow him on, on the Facebook as well. Just look up Helson Gracie, and you'll find it. And uh, But, yeah, oh, yeah. That, I don't have anything else to... I don't have anything else to plug other other than uh, didn't you want to didn't you want to challenge uh, Helson to uh, again to <laughs> to no. a, a knee bar in the street isn't that what you oh. said is it oh. <laughs> <Caramba>. really <laughs> no, I never said that and I never will say that <laughs> I know I'm causing trouble I'm causing trouble <laughs> you're gonna get me beat up hey, no uh, I just want to see him kick you in the face no just no, once no no no, <laughs> no, no, no. I, good behavior uh, I don't have that's against bar, violence I've heard all the stories no, but no, I've no. never seen I've never got a chance to really see him kick somebody in the face no, hey, no, come no, on no. Jake I would, no, let, no. I would let him kick me out of the face <laughs> kick me in the face just out of respect no brothers no no, no you don't want that Trust no me. it's not me it's not me that's not oh, me uh, 
Check Thank out you. our YouTube page, the Jiu-Jitsu Lifestyle Podcast YouTube page. We have some fun videos for everybody that will not only you'll love and enjoy, but you'll also be outraged and angry by them, which yeah. is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, Every, yeah. One of the, one <laughs> yeah, of the, sure. one of the two. You, you, you'll either like us or hate us, but hey, you know, it, it's all it's all that's that the fun. True. That's the truth. God bless you guys. Take opportunity to come here, express myself. You remind my daddy things and keep you on in this in this good Good, you know, way to be in jiu-jitsu. Close my daddy and also honor the job he did. And, you know, now it's going to, guys, know the 1st of October is going to be Helio Gracie Day in Brazil. It's going to be... Oh, wow. A, 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 it's going to be a big holiday. The 1st of October is going to be holiday. And then I really appreciate the government in Brazil make this thing happen. And then it's going to be MMM Day in honor of Helio Gracie, 1st of October, it's going to be holidays, real f- f- holidays in Brazil. It's going to close everything. And, yes, a Memorial Day for him. I hope the guys get this day, make tournaments for jiu-jitsu in honor of Helio Grace, you know, doing something good in this day for my daddy. Be re- recognized and be uh, celebrate in the goodwill with tournaments in Brazil, or, you know, World Cup Brazil, Helio Grace World Cup, something with jiu-jitsu involved. It's going to be beautiful. I hope everything's okay. You're going to be celebrating this day with a lot of, you know, emphasis and, and happiness. It'll be holiday, my day this day. 21st of October, October 1st, is going to be the holidays in Brazil. That's great. And you honor my daddy. He deserves it, man. God bless. Stay in peace. And let's keep his job and work done. And I keep work for him. And this is going to be my... My end, my life, keep this life with Helio Grace and the, my will, you know. That's the way I want to be. And respect you guys, the ones that appreciate, I'll be on. And take care of the ones close to me, associations, and teach behavior, teach the discipline of my daddy passed me. He eventually, his jiu-jitsu the best. Thank you guys for the opportunity to be here tonight, and very happy to work with you guys. Rob, I'll be back here in November. And awesome. then let's get a rematch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, rematch. I don't know. Yes. I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, <didn't> go so well. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I'll be already, bro. I never know. <laughs> Take opportunity, guys. I appreciate it. Good night. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Whole guys to speak to us, to listen to us. <laughs> thank you, audience. It thanks for having me here, bro. Right on, Jake. Oh, my howl. You want You want to rock us out? Yep, thanks for listening to the Jiu-Jitsu Lifestyle Podcast, everybody. 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 Podcast.